this is Dorothy with Dot Scrapbooking and today I'm going to do pattern number 20 from the Make It From Your Heart volume 5 um, of our one of our how-to books and these are so handy so if you get stuck in decision making like I do um, I would suggest you get a, a one of our how-to books and it gives you ideas and then you just plug in the papers and so you've got what it kind of looks like, depending on the paper, and then you've got the layout, where to put everything, and a cutting guide. I mean, for those of us who have a hard time making decisions, this just takes you right to it. You just pick the papers out. And so I am going to use these really pretty papers that are getting ready for Valentine's Day. And I got a bundle that came with the uh, paper packet and the stickers off to the right there and then on the upper right is a stamp set along with thin cuts of a flower a butterfly a big beautiful heart kind of a lacy hot heart and a stamp so these are the beautiful papers and i just i love that lace one but i love the colors in these papers and so I'm just going to go ahead and remove the zip strip, which, you know, is perfect there. It's X's and O's, so just perfect for Valentine's Day. And then we've got a nice little stripe. And um, the flip side of that lace paper is just a red scarlet background with little white hearts. Really just perfect for Valentine's Day. And so I am going to use these papers to um, cut the triangles for this particular layout. So the uh, first cutting diagram shows to make a piece that's six and a fourth by seven and another piece, the longer piece, there is six and a fourth by ten inches. So once you cut those pieces, then you're going to place them back into the cutting guide into uh, from point to point um, diagonally, and then you're going to cut it that way so that you make two triangles, two for each page. So this one, the lace is getting six and a fourth by seven. I'm just trying to do the math. So 12 minus seven is five, so I'm cutting five inches off. So you want to make sure that you've got your, your uh, lace going in the right direction. So here I am putting the uh, corner to corner diagonally and then I'm going to split right through it and that's going to make you your triangles to go in uh, each of the corners. So it's a pretty simple way for cutting triangles. So you, uh, depending on the paper and depending on your placement, sometimes it works, but sometimes uh, if there's a right side up type um, decoration then or print, then it's, you know, you have to be careful with how you place it on the other, the other page. So it's pretty simple to, you know, find the exact corner when you, um, when I use this rail cutter from Fiskars. So this is like my favorite, that's my go-to. And I'm going to make some little changes. Like I want to make some, put some more pictures on either side. So this says to cut a six and a fourth six and three-fourths by six and three-fourths, but I'm going to extend it and I'm going to make the piece on the right a, a, a solid piece. So it's going to be um, nine and three-fourths by, I think, six and a half. Yes, six and a half. <clears throat> so that's kind of how how I did that.
I'm just adding adding the pieces there. So the each is they're they're using three three inch pictures to go there. So um, by doing three and a fourth by three and a fourth, you're giving a quarter of an inch all around to the three by three picture. Um, I'm just adding them all together so I can get get one piece. So it's just a little bit neater looking and I get a few more pictures. Okay, so this is me going through trying to figure out what color to make the background for the pictures. And it's a painful decision because all the colors are really pretty. And I cut, let me see, so there's mulberry, the green is Seabrook, which is just gorgeous. Um, what is this one? Scarlet, maybe? So there's Scarlet and there's uh, Desert Rose and the Mulberry and there's Ballerina and all these, you know, really pretty colors. So I'm thinking that I'm going to use the Scarlet to just, you know, be a real strong thing for the pictures to stand out on. And, you know, so I'm cutting them to like eight and three fourths by like six and a, six and a quarter. So then I kind of think, well, let me see, let me see what the, <laughs> and it just happens that I have quite a bit of cardstock. And so I do have, you know, all these different colors available to me. Um, it's better to make your decisions quickly. I kind of decide that what I want to do is use the Seabrook, which is just so beautiful. And it's a nice neutral color that would go with most anything that you put on there. The Scarlet could be a little, um, you know, a little bit more, uh, you know, contrasting with pictures. So that's why I kind of went with the Seabrook. But then I decided I wanted the Seabrook to stand out more, so I decided to put a black background on the Seabrook. So I'm, I'm just having just a little bit of, I don't even think that's a quarter of an inch, I think it's probably like an eighth of an inch or so all around um, to go uh, on the back of that beautiful green color that I love so much. So I'm just gonna do kind of a dry run here and do the layout. So the lace, I need to get all these things out of the way. I start cluttering myself up and you can't, can't tell what's going on. So I'm thinking, okay, let's just kind of see what looks better. So there's the Seabrook with the black on each side. And then I've got the uh, Scarlet. And, you know, I really, I don't know. It just, it says it needs to be the Seabrook to me. So that's what I went with. But, you know, that scarlet will get used. I'll be using, I'm going to be making, my next video is going to be a bunch of cards for Valentine's. So I'll be using that scarlet for sure. Um, so I just kind of like like the way it looks. So I'm just kind of putting down the, the uh, photos and how they're going to lay out. And I've got, you know, a 6x6 six six and two 3x4s that are going to go on there. And then I've got a four by six and I'm trying to figure out what to what to put over on that far right hand side so that that's iffy for sure so I'm thinking like three by threes and then I've got a little bit left over you can't see it because I've got my book in the way I need to move the book to get it move everything over and then I kind of decide this is why I say workshops are a good idea for me because I have a hard time making a decision. So I'm taking my white cardstock and I'm cutting a half an inch off on either side with the thought that, you know what, if I've got a black background on the Seabrook, then I should do the same thing with the white and just have, you know, have everything kind of um, just jump out so that um, you know everything has a black a black uh, background on it 
And it does really make everything just a little bit more stark. Well, I cut a half an inch off and I decided that was too much. That paper will also get used to I'm cutting off a quarter of an inch. So I hope you're not doing what, working along with me. You need to always go for a little while before, before uh, you start following me because I do change my mind. Okay, so there is, there we have just an eighth of an inch showing. And then I kind of decide, see how pretty that is? It really looks good. So I decide that it's not really distressing, but I'm just putting a black edge on all of these papers to just kind of give it, um, you know, kind of go with the, the theme of having a black, a, bell, a black outline. So it makes the edge of the paper just um, stick out just a little bit more. So I'm just edging all of the papers. If I was going to distress it, I would use a sponge, but um, I'm just calling this edging. So there we go. So I think that looks pretty. And then with the Seabrook in the black, um, I just really like the way that looks. So I'm putting a black edge on here. I don't know that it really needed it because it's getting a black background, but I went ahead and did it anyway. So it's the darker color of the Seabrook um, that's going to be sticking out. Okay, I'm totally happy with the way that looks. I love that Seabrook color, gosh. So same kind of thing, putting the second page together as we go along. And, you know, I like it so much better to just have a little bit of the black because it's, a, you know, it's strong. It's, you know, you've got black against white. That's uh, pretty much the ultimate and in contrast, and uh, you don't want to have too much. So I'm going to go ahead and edge my pieces here. And then that's how those are going to go. So there's going to be a top and there's going to be a bottom. That's how we're doing that. So I'm going to put the pink one down first because it goes underneath the flowers. See, there's that little background with the little tiny hearts. And there's my big pretty flowers. So, and then this piece is going to be edged also, and I'll put it on its black background. So I'm using Tombow. That's, that's usually my go-to. That's the, the uh, runner that I like the best. So I'm going to go ahead and um, I've got the four by six, four by four isn't going to work. That's a four by four. So if I put a three by three there, then I think I'm going to run some two by twos next to the three by threes. So there's going to be a four by six, two three by threes, and then, um, two, four, three, three, two by twos. That's, that's how things are going to roll on that side. Okay, so I'm just kind of playing around with what, what I want to do. I did, <clears throat> I cut some of the lace doilies with the thin cut from the uh, stamp set. And I found my 2x2 two two photo placeholders and put three of them down. And then I've got the uh, two three by fours going next to the four by six. So I'm just gonna go ahead and, <clears throat> excuse me, edge all of the photo, uh, photo place holders. Now you can either, you know, just totally cover these up or you can take them off and put your pictures in place. Um, or you could cut these, just cut your photos just a little bit short and have a black, little bit of a white and black rim around your pictures. So 
it's it's up to you. Um, I'm just kind of doing, I'm being consistent with the uh, photo placeholders uh, as I was with the papers. And you can tell that there's just a little bit of an edge on the papers to stick out against the white. So I really, I like the way that that looks. There was another consultant that inspired me with, with that. And uh, she's up in Canada. And so thank you, Jennifer. So I'm just kind of going by the layout because they'll give you dimensions on where to do all your placements. So this is going about an inch and three quarters down from the top and I'm centering it with my, my ruler. And uh, over here, same kind of thing. I'm going to put all my photos in place. Photo placeholders, rather. <clears throat> excuse, excuse me. So this way you can get a better idea of what everything looks like. So once again, edging, edging all the pieces to go in place. And I'm going to do the two by twos. So I really, I'm glad that I made the, uh, the photo backdrop um, bigger to accommodate more pictures. Um, and we'll see what I end up with. Uh, hopefully I'll be able to take pictures of um, Philip and Jim and I around Valentine's Day and use use it for that. That's what I'm hoping for. That's my plan. That's my plan. Unless I find some pictures that would be suitable for uh, for this layout. Oh dear. Running out. Always running out. So, had to go get some more. Hmm. So what um what I'm putting down here, this is Seabrook Shimmer Trim. So I missed somehow I missed putting that last piece down on the previous page, but that's okay. So this is the Seabrook, you got the idea. This is the Seabrook Brook Shimmer Trim. Is that not beautiful? So I decided to use that as an edging down at the bottom. And it was, uh, you know, part of the suggestion on the initial layout from the book. And so that's the, this is, now this is the top of the second page. So I'm just putting, I just put it upside down so I can see what I'm doing closer. And always leave a little clear uh, piece at the end so you can find the end uh, of your shimmer trim. So I was just showing you that that's the Seabrook shimmer trim. So is that not like so pretty? Okay, there we go. Except it's the end. So what I was thinking, I'm still trying to figure out what to do here. So I was thinking of putting this Our Story, which actually looks pretty good on there. Um, and I went through this whole kind of thing. I mean, that would have, that totally would have worked. But somehow when I would, and it would have worked down there too. And it looks pretty. I like the, the uh, shiny gold um, outlining that piece. That kind of goes along with the whole outlining idea of um, my layout. Uh, but, you know, I kind of decide that I don't really want that. I was thinking that the gold, shiny gold, didn't look great with the Seabrook, but I think I was wrong. I think it would have looked just fine. So I went through this whole thing of what to do. And, you know, I went into my thin cuts and found uh, the my thin cut that says family and also the one that says XOXO. And um, I made made one in black. I made one in 
Seabrook regular cardstock. Then I found my Seabrook cardstock, uh, the glitter cardstock, which, woohoo, I can't believe I found it because I didn't think I had any. So um, I know all, all that organization and I still <laughs> still get lost with with stuff. I think maybe I've got too much. I have a tendency to save glitter card stock, uh, which is ridiculous, but I think it's so pretty. I tend to save it rather than use it, which, okay, you have to think of everything as a tool. So glitter card stock is a tool for you not to be saved. Just saying, this is, this is what I do. So I have all this um, discontinued cardstock and all these beautiful colors and I'm thinking why didn't I use those when those colors were current so I'm just saying a little reminder you hear me say this all the time unfortunately use your stuff don't save it because there's going to be new stuff coming out that you're going to want and you're going to get and then you've got all this other stuff and you just have to find some organizational ability to put it away and yet be able to find it again. So I'm telling you, use your stuff. Don't save it because something else is going to come out that you like as much or more. So I'm going to go ahead and use the black. Um, just because I, it really sticks out and it goes with all the edging. And what I did was I took my sea glass uh, ink blot, ink pad, and um, sponged a little cloud of Seabrook ink behind the family. So I went ahead and sponged it and I put it behind the XOXO. I don't know that I need that XOXO, but you know what? It's cute and I like it. And I kind of use XOXO as my sign off on my blog. And um, so I went ahead and used it. Um, like I said, these are older discontinued thin cuts, the family and the XOXO, hugs and kisses. So I went ahead and used my liquid glue and then put a block on top of it to keep it in place. And I'm just dotting it. That way, you know, you don't have all this stuff gushing out and it'll dry a little bit faster. So I do like the XOXO though. And I'll put a block on top of it too. Stay. So I'm not sure I understand. My watch is talking to me. Silly thing. Um so I'm using some of these gorgeous embroidered embellishments from my um, uh, bundle. So this was part, part of the bundle. So I got the paper, the printed paper, 12 pieces of cardstock, the embroidered embellishments, the thin cut and stamp set. Um, so this is one of them that you see here. And that was all for the bundle. So it really was kind of a, I think it was a really good deal to get the bundle. I'll go ahead and put that down below. I wanted to use some of these beautiful uh, stickers too. I mean, we've got gold hearts and, you know, pretty butterflies with shiny gold on them. And look at these em embroidered, embroidered embellishments. They just have a thing to peel and stick. Is that not cool? Look how beautiful that rose is. And they just blend so beautifully with, with all of the papers. So I'm doing a mixture of the stickers and the uh, embroidered embellishments. Um, I just think they're all so pretty. And I think I could have used a few more of the stickers uh, than I did. But those are like super pretty. I'll probably add more later on just, just so you know. And I can use this little tag as a date. Um, I like to put the dates up there. 
And what what else? All these cute little hearts. I love the shiny. There's a real pretty butter pretty uh, butterfly that has a lot of the shiny gold in it. So it's kind of so what I did was um, off camera. I took all of the thin cuts that comes with the stamp set and I went and cut them. So I cut three flowers, uh, three butterflies, three stamps, and a number of hearts. And I'm going to go ahead and stamp, not, not so much the uh, stamp one, but I'm going to stamp the butterflies and, uh, and the flower. And I really like what they've done with this stamp set. So I'll show you, which lets you do multicolor stamping real easily. So here are, I'm just going to put the flowers together and the butterflies together. So there we go. Now the butterfly has two stamps to it. It's got, got a solid stamp and then it's got a detailed stamp. So the idea is to go ahead and use two different colors. So I went and got a bunch of colors they magically appeared and I'm going to use honey butter which this is just such a pretty 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 yellow and it's one of the colors in in this set so I'm going to go ahead and give it a quick stamp and I went ahead and seasoned it um, on the back of my hand and I'm just going to line it up perfectly as perfect as I can get it and it came out really good. So this is very, very cool. So you don't have to, um, you know, it's not as much oh, technique involved in trying to make a, a, a multicolor butterfly. So this is my new container for my, my microcloth. So it's you wet it and then it doesn't get sour by sitting in a closed container. It'll it'll dry out. So here's the second part of the butterfly. So this is the detailed part. Now I'm going to go ahead. You could use whatever colors you want to put together to make a butterfly. I'm using black, so my butterfly is going to be black and yellow. So that's sort of like a swallowtail. And look at how beautiful that came out. So um, and that's just my scrap. So you just kind of fit the little body where it needs to go and the wings follow. So look at how pretty. I mean, what an, it's pretty, right? I think it's really pretty. And then you can do it in whatever colors you want. I mean, you know, I've got black and black and blue butterflies in my backyard. So you could make a lighter blue with the black. Um, you know, and of course, you can make orange and black for monarchs. So all sorts of, you know, whatever colors you want to put together. So I just think that's really, really pretty. So the idea is, and then I'm going to clean those off. On my wet, I went and wet, wetted down my micro cloth. And it's the same thing with the flower. So here's the background of the flower. So the, the ballerina, I'm just kind of figuring out what colors to put together. Any of those actually would go fine. So I'm using ballerina as my light background. It only makes sense to use the lighter for the background so the darker sticks out. So there we go. Now, I guess if you wanted, I didn't even think about this, you could use a second stamping of the same color on top of the butterfly, I mean, on top of the flower, and uh, get a slightly darker, I don't know whether that would work or not. Well, I didn't try it anyway. Um, so I am just going to go ahead and do the uh, background of ballerina, and then I'm using scarlet to go over the ballerina. So that looks really, really pretty. And there we go. So the, aren't they pretty? And once again, you do the color combination. You know, I'm just doing these to match the flowers on the paper. 
And so, you know, I'm going to make some different combinations here. And, you know, I thought I would use the mulberry as a background. It's kind of dark. Okay, I'm going to test that out and see what it looks like. Mulberry with the desert rose on top. Problem is, I did it on a yellow background, so it's a little muddy looking. So I'm stumped. Okay, what other color combinations do I do? Because, you know, you just don't go with <laughs> what looks good right off the bat. But I'm going to go ahead and go back to my light background of ballerina and then use some other colors on top of it. So there's the ballerina. And... Um, Clean it off, put the flower details on, and use the uh, mulberry to go with it. And that's, that's a doable. It's better on the white. And once again, I'm going to do the ballerina. And let's see. So we're going to see what Desert Rose looks like with Ballerina. Yep. I like them. So I think that's a great idea to have the background and the flower detail and the butterfly background and its detail and like I said it's made life very very easy uh, for us by you know making some multicolored uh, embellishments for for our layouts or cards whichever and then I'm going to do um, a me and you and I'm thinking of doing it in mulberry, so I'm going to put it on, on the uh, little heart there, and then I'm going to show you what what we're going to do because I didn't have any uh, a picture my life card, or there was no there was no journaling card on the stickers, so this is what I'm going to do. I'm putting me and you. And then I'm going to get my ruler and I'm going to start making lines and use my, my doily heart as a journaling card. So I'm just counting up the little stitched lines from the bottom so that I'm hopefully going parallel and then just using the line that I just made as the next go by as the go by to make the next line. So there we go. I'm giving them a quarter of an inch. My writing's going to have to be small, hopefully neat, unlike my usual handwriting. And there we go. So cute, right? And I could have done it on the light pink, probably not on the red heart, but, but definitely on the uh, pink one that would have been fine too. So I'm going to put it right down there and just make sure that you, you always want to tell your story. You know, you always want to tell your story. I mean, this is, instead of history, it's her story. So this is, this is the important part. You know, pictures, pictures without words are just pictures. And in 50 years from now, they can be anybody's picture and you won't read, you know, People won't know who they are. So please, please make it a point to put names, dates, put down some feelings. I mean, feelings, feelings are an okay thing. You know, were you having good feelings, especially loving? Um, did your child do something to bring tears to your eyes in a good way? Um, or did your husband do something especially wonderful and thoughtful for you or did you do it for them i mean put put down the important 
the important things. And then I put a little better together in gold there. And I'm going to add, did I add flowers to that? I hope so. They, need, they needed to be popped up. I didn't, whatever I did, I didn't put enough down. So I'm probably going to go back and add more. Look at that beautiful butterfly. I love that butterfly. And there's a nice big one. Big sticker. They're pretty, really pretty stickers. And nice, a big red heart. And a scarlet heart. And a little gold heart. And I added the dot from the <laughs> Seabrook on top of my family. Instead of just a plain old black dot, I made it the Seabrook glitter. Okay, and then I'm going to have another yellow butterfly going from one page to another. So I like my yellow butterflies and all, all my other embellishments. So I think this is a wonderful stamp set. I'm going to have fun making cards. So like I said, that's going to be the next video that I do. Um, hopefully I'll be working on it tomorrow and I'll have some cards. It's now and forever. And you can get it separate. I got it in a bundle, but you can actually get it separate. And you've got plenty of time to get it now before Valentine's Day to make to get ready for Valentine's Day. So there's my layout just for family with hugs and kisses. So I hope you like it. Please subscribe to my channel and I would appreciate it and I appreciate you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Give me a thumbs up. Bye. Hi, I'm Dorothy Smith. Thanks for watching my video. And please subscribe to my YouTube channel and learn along with me. Thanks. Bye-bye.